by double figures to get to the finals. Larry Hunter and Western Carolina were dead and buried around halftime last night against the two-time defending champion Davidson Wildcats, and they came back and won it. And won a tremendous game. Here's Brandon Box with a free double-figure scores for Western Carolina. Sinclair's another, and he gets the Catamounts on the board. Now we talk a lot about Trey Sumler, but James Sinclair is so consistent. He doesn't have to hunt for shots. He just finds ways to score. Number 25 in purple. This is Cochran. Sinclair will have the matchup on him. Sinclair's the best perimeter defender for Western Carolina. Or Skinner. Backing down against Kenneth Paul, and he is able to get it down. Skinner has to play well. He's one of the toughest guys that Mike Young has ever coached. The interior defense in Western Carolina known to be exceptional. Boggs a three. Tip try by Hall wouldn't go. He slapped it alive but out of bounds and it will be Wofford basketball. Watch Lee Skinner. Watch his right foot as he pins right there. He steps to the basket and just tufts his way to the rim. They need that toughness in the paint, Adam. For Wofford to be successful, they can't fall in love with the three. Wofford, a surprising down year last season. They had just 13 wins. They were picked sixth in the SoCon preseason poll, but they played a very difficult non-conference schedule. They're ready for this moment. So is Carl Cochran, who averages 15 a ball game, two threes already for the Terriers, who lead by six. The first team all Southern Conference. You just saw why. Quick draw. This is Sumler. Draws the foul and he'll go to the free throw line. Cochran is called for his first foul of the night. That was a major concern on defense for Mike Young's team. He wants to avoid getting his guards into foul trouble against Sumler, who will shoot his 175th free throw of the season here. Coming off 25 points, 15 of 16 at the line in the semifinals against Davidson in that win. Trey Sumler is an unorthodox offensive player. He's herky-jerky. He gets defenders off their feet and draws contact. And Larry Hunter, there you see the 649 career wins one for 650. Highly successful coach at Ohio University for the Bobcats. Coach the Shack of the Matt Gary Trent. Gino Ford, now the head coach of Bradley. Dave Jamerson, it's a tremendous players in Athens, Ohio. Cochran, pull up, pop, and he hits. He's got five early for Wofford. Off to a hot start. Trey Sumler came to Western Carolina as a walk-on. He's developed into one of the best players in the league. Brandon Fox left it short. Tawaski King could not corral. It'll be Wofford ball on the other side of this break. Four and a half into the Southern Conference Championship. Seven tickets have been punched. Number eight will be punched here tonight. Some championships, and rightfully so, they won the last two. But listen, Wofford has quite a history as well recently. Let's start offensively for Wofford. They're four of six from the floor. Run and jump. There's the blitz on Spencer Collins. He's able to find Cochran. He has to play out of a trap. Pressure early from the Catamounts. Garcia for three. And by Brandon Boggs. Western Carolina has three double-figure scorers. Boggs is one of them. And Garcia, one of the smallest players on the floor, goes up top of the board. Lead pass up ahead, and Newman gets fouled up. Oh, what a pass by Eric Garcia. Watch this touch pass. It is dead on in full gallop, right on the money. The last 12 games, Eric Garcia has had 40 assists, 40 assists, and only six turnovers. He's really taking care of the basketball. Early subs as Jalen Allen, that's 20 in white, and John Swinton will check in for Wofford. Garcia and Spencer Collins, who's a double-figure scorer, they both head to the bench. SoCon tournament, 54% at the free throw line for Wofford. They're 19 of 36 so far. Need to sure it up in the line. Newman splits a pair and he comes off. Eris Smith 
is into the game. That's 14 in white. He has played four minutes in the Southern Conference Tournament. He is playing his final collegiate basketball game tonight. And he's going to guard Kowalski King. That's the big boy, 32 in purple down low. He's in there for a specific reason. Be a big load down low and make things happen in the paint. Lefty try from Justin Browning would not go. Here comes Wofford up seven. A screen by Smith to open up Cochran for three. That was last touch by Lee Skinner. And Western Carolina will take over. The reason we tell you that Eris Smith is playing his final collegiate basketball game, he has a significant knee problem that has kept him from practicing. He talked with Mike Young, and they both decided that if Wofford makes it to the tournament, he will not play. Tonight will be his final collegiate game. A true team player who's trying to shut down King. Sinclair off the glass, has four points. Well, Sinclair so good at creating offense, really explosive off the dribble. Came up big last night in that victory over Davidson. Cochran playing off the ball right now. Whistle and a foul. Well, Adam, you mentioned Eris Smith. He does not practice during the week. The only way that he can keep his cardiovascular at a high level is to go to the YMCA and swim six days a week because his knees are so bad and so painful. His quality of life is not good right now. He's constantly dealing with the pain, but he stays in shape by swimming six days a week for this one opportunity to help his team go to the NCAA tournament. Closing up Justin Gordon against Browning. Shakes up and scores. Gordon is one of five underclassmen who play important minutes for Wofford, which leads by seven. He's very quick and definitive down the block. That's what I like about him. He makes decisions and he commits to it. 24 in white, Justin Gordon. Western Carolina has just six points in the first seven minutes, but they've been the cardiac catamounts in the first two games of this tournament. And last night, a very slow start. They got down by 15 against Davidson in an overtime win. 36 points in the first half of the game, 63 in the second half of the game. And Trey Sumler and James Sinclair both exploded in that game. Sinclair went for 26 points. Trey Sumler's one of those guys He's not scared. He's going to get his volume of show up, shots up, and he's going to get it going and make a lot. He's rounding the sophomore from Alabama. There's Sumler, who has two points early. Fifth leading scorer in the SoCal. Sumler had 24 points. They combined for 50 last night. Back within five, seven minutes in. Carolina, they look for steals and they look for blocks. It's high risk, high reward. Shot clock down to seven. Cochran, a deep three. Round it out. Brummett could not hold on, and Smith ends up with the rebound. Well, when you play defense that hard and that well, and then have to play defense and chase these guys again. Watch the purple jerseys, how they react. Western Carolina, very good at reacting to the ball and playing with their feet and active hands. Sinclair on Cochran again. Here's where you have to have defensive patience. Browning went for the steal. That opened up a lane to the rim for Justin Gordon. And a whistle and a foul is called at the 11.59 mark. Brummett called for the whistle. A five-point lead for Wofford, eight minutes in. There's Justin Gordon at the line. Terriers from Spartanburg, South Carolina. 19 wins this year for Wofford after they had just 13 in a surprising down year last season. 
the turn of all top three scorers for the Terriers. And Mike Young's team is a step away from the NCAA tournament, as is Western Carolina looking for its first bid since 1996 when Phil Hopkins had Thad Mata as his lead assistant on that team. Brandon Box working hard, and Box finally gets his first two points, averaging a dozen a game. Brandon Boggs, one of those real active athletes. He's really matured over the last half of the season, much more in attack mode now. Averaging 17 a game over his last five. A couple of big games in the SoCon series so far. And shooting over 50% as well during that stretch. Collins guarded by Sinclair. Will Cochran on the floor right now. Walker's leading score. Skinner backing. Tough shot. Lee Skinner leads his second bucket. I like what Wofford's doing early, getting Lee Skinner involved in establishing a low block game. Well done. Here's Tom Tankowitz, a very good three-point shooter. Dumps it down for Brummett. Tough defense and a foul on Justin Gordon. Well, Western Carolina from Cullowhee, North Carolina, a 19-win team themselves. They return all five starters from a team that won just 14 games last year, but they were picked third in the Southern Conference preseason poll. Elon and Davidson were the two teams picked in front of them. Those are the two teams that Western Carolina knocked off in this Southern Conference tournament after trading by double digits in the second half of each of those games. As Cochran comes back in, ninth leading scorer in the Southern Conference. Robin. Sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. One of those big bodied rebounders there, Torian Brummett. So this is a freshman, Eric Garcia. He can run the point guard position. He's been very good, especially in the second half of the year. And he can shoot. So between he and Cochran, that's a really good guard combo out there right now. And Western Carolina goes to 1 3 1 zone, and they get a steal out of it. A rare turnover by Wofford. Sumler in transition. Boggs. Offensive foul. The charge was drawn by Lee Skinner, and Boggs has his second foul. Watch Skinner move his feet number 34 and establish guarding position right there. He's, He's set. Locked. He's, He's locked set. That's an easy call. No basket. Let's play on. And that's a tough break because Boggs, at the 10-22 mark of the first half, has picked up his second foul. He's the second leading scorer for Western Carolina, a team that averages 75 points a game. And solid offensively in the SoCon tourney, but Boggs is off. And Mike Brown, the sophomore, who has hit some big shots already in his Western Carolina career, will check in. When you look at these two teams, you make an assumption that Western Carolina might have especially a defensive advantage in the paint. But Lee Skinner, number 34 in white, very productive. 1-3-1 one, one zone again. Yep. Skip the Cochran. Look for short corner. You got to get something down the short corner and then diagonals across the back side. Cochran late in the clock. Collins. Cochran with three. Jacks up a three. And hits it! Carl Cochran with his second three. He's got eight. Wofford matches its largest lead. Great defensive sequence, though, by Western Carolina. Right. They'll take that shot all night long. Step back. And a foul is called by Carl Hess. Spencer Collins came out on Tankelwitz. Tankelwitz, the redshirt senior, the transfer from Charleston Southern, now in his third year at Western Carolina. We were told by Larry Hunter today he is an X Factor. Why? Because when he makes threes, Western Carolina wins. In their wins, he has shot 46% from behind the arc. In their losses, 23% for Larry Hunter's basketball team. If this kid makes shots, watch out. McDonald's an All-American nominee back in high school. 6-2 free throws 
He's 42 and 46 at the line this year. Very solid. Now Western Carolina backs off out of one three zone. They're in two three zone now. Two three, and that Cochran is on the far side of the floor. Here he is. A nice cut by Collins. Got a good look. Skinner the tap try when it go. He slapped it alive, but it's grabbed by King. Stolen by Cochran. He finds Newman. <laughs> Trigger from the corner. Sky high Collins for the board. Garcia, the open floor. Bad decision. Yeah. Three purple jerseys back, really forced action right there. Here comes Sinclair back the other way for Western Carolina. Step back three. Sinclair trying to get going. King kept it alive. Sinclair back out to Tanklewitz. Frenetic offense yes. right now for Western Carolina. Dare I say out of control a bit. Tanglewitz jacks up a three. Western Carolina, a little out of sorts right now. They are three of ten for the floor. And the last three shots forced Jays from behind the arc. Forced Jays. Garcia, the freshman, settles it down. Three of twelve in the field now. By the Catamounts, 50% from the floor for Wofford. Cocker gets past Sinclair. High off the glass, tipped up by Newman, and a foul over the back on C.J. Newman. A nice start for Carl Cochran with eight of his team's points. Carl Cochran. Sometimes the best offense is just give it to Carl Cochran. And then he decoys defensively, acts like he's running back, steps in the passing lane. Newman! <laughs> Carolina right now, it's not just the jump shots, it's the shot selection. They're really forcing jump shots right now. They go inside, Brown had a chance, could not get the reversal, but a whistle and a foul on Wofford. Skinner is called for his second foul, the junior from Lombard. And the line number two, Mike Brown shooting two. Two shots coming for Mike Brown, the sophomore. Western Carolina, 7 of 8 at the free throw line already. And when we're done, here in Asheville, North Carolina, we'll take it to Las Vegas. Gonzaga and St. Mary's over on ESPN right now. Usually we're seeing that in the championship game, but BYU and San Fran, the other semifinal, looking to clinch a spot in tomorrow night's West Coast Conference Championship. That's on ESPN2 when we're done. That Tyler Hawes has led BYU to 22 yep. wins. How about San Francisco? 21 wins on the Rex Walters. That is the best start since 81 82 for the Dons of San Francisco. Get back to the top. Gordon got to turn at the rim. Here comes Western Carolina. This is Rhett Harrelson, the sophomore guard out of Alabama, who can handle the basketball. So right now, Boggs is off, Sinclair is off, and Sumler off. Where does Western Carolina go for points? You got to go inside. You got to dump it inside. King, a big load down low, matched up with Eric Smith. Blitz on Harrelson. He handles it well. Finds King from the elbow. Decent look. Brown tipped it. Slapped up by Hall. But Wofford controls and Aris Smith making an impact tonight in his final collegiate game. That was a nice block off by Aris Smith. Let's see who guards Cochran here. It looks like Mike Brown is on him. The sophomore. Tough assignment here. Trying to find Garcia. Smith against King. He just doesn't have legs. He has no lift. No lift. He has no knees. Here's a three from Brown. Brown off the heel. And out of bounds to Western Carolina. Now, a little bit of a line change here for Western Carolina. Needing offense. They're going to bring their three double-figure scorers back out onto the floor. Sinclair, who has four. Boggs has two points. Sumler does not have a field goal yet. He has two free throw mix. You know what, though, Adam, for Larry Hunter, when you make a line change like that, the score is identical to what it was when it took it up. And a beautiful find underneath for Boggs. He's got four points.
special situations. Larry Hunter going for 650 wins. You learn a little something about out of bounds yes, plays sir. when you've coached for that long. Sinclair is back out on Cochran and just blanking. Collins on the deck, all the way to the rim and position for Boggs for the rebound. Here come the Catamounts. Tankowitz. Extra pass from Sunday to Boggs. A step through and he lays it in. He is so long and quick to the basket. Catamount fans to their feet in Carolina. Cochran hasn't moved the entire possession yet. He's been resting on the right hand block. Looking for Newman. Here comes Western Carolina for its first lead of the game. Rebound by Carl Cochran. Very good rebounding guard. The second on the team with five boards a game. He does just about everything for Wofford. He's got eight of Wofford's points early. Watch number two at white. See if he moves without the basketball this possession. He literally stood the entire possession, last possession. Credit to Sinclair. He's making Cochran work to get open. Cochran's a little gassed, and here he is late in the clock again. Came with the hedge. That left C.J. Newman open, and he knocks it down, making him pay with a long two. C.J. Newman, one of those guys where typically you know what you're going to get. 50-50 balls, second chance points. Right there, that's a bonus knocking down the three ball. The two. Going to two. But by Tanglewitz, he was right underneath the rim, so no position. Works hard for the tip. That wouldn't fall, and it's out of bounds. It'll stay at this end of the floor. Brandon Boggs, averaging 12 a ball game, has six so far the senior from South Carolina. And Western Carolina, after trailing, really doing a good job of building the clock on their offensive touch is getting good shots so far. Not only making Western Carolina play defense, but also only two turnovers in the first half. Here is Sumler, still doesn't have a bucket. That was slapped alive by Brandon Box, but run down by Newman. Seven tickets have already been punched to the NCAA tournament. Number eight is here in Asheville, North Carolina, in the Southern Conference Championship. Watch how Wofford spreads the floor and keeps the ball moving. This is the second reversal. Already 20 seconds on this possession. Here's Conley. Maybe he feels fresh. In and out of the three, Jalen Allen kept it alive, working hard on the glass. That gets ripped away by King, and a jump ball will keep it at this end of the floor. Allen is 6'3", 180, going up against the senior King, who's 6'8", 245. And he caught it in midair, tried to tip it back in, so just bringing it down and powering it up. He steps off, and Spencer Collins will come in and inbound the ball. Fresh shot clock. Collins. I think Sinclair is there for the rebound. Western Carolina just 25% from the floor in his first half. No six from three-point range. Only down four. But a bad pass by Box, too tall for even the six-foot-eight king. preseason all-conference selection for Wofford. Spencer Collins takes it all the way and will go to the free throw line. A foul on King. It'll be his first. Wofford's so good at handling the ball. Mark, you pointed it out. Just two turnovers in this game so far. In the first two games of this tournament, look at that. 12 turnovers, one steal by the opposition. And this is a big change from last year, because last year, Wofford had more turnovers than assists. This, this team is amazing at taking care of the basketball. And if you want to give out a non-turnover award, give it to the point guard, Eric Garcia. Yeah, freshman. Just a freshman. He's just played so solid. 
between he and Cochran handling the basketball more often than not. And give credit to John Swinton, the junior, as well. They've done a great job holding on to the ball, averaging nine turnovers in SoCon games this year. Cochran splits. Rebound for Sinclair. It's amazing how some of your great point guards this year, guys like Tyler Ellis at Syracuse, has been a, a great assistant turnover guy. Fred Van Vliet is only a sophomore, has a great assistant turnover ratio with the three in the country. You see if Garcia takes such good care of the ball as well for Watson. Monte Morris, good freshman. Yep. For Iowa State. Here's King in the post against Newman. Down inside, it's hurt by Cochran. That one's loose out, and a foul is called. King really working hard down low right now. This is the difference with Tawaski King here recently. He's playing like he did a couple of years ago where he's establishing deep position in the paint. You saw where he caught it right on the block, which gave him effective avenue right to the basket. Looking for career point number 1,000. And he's got it, a 70% free throw shooter at the line. Hey, I wonder if he gets his size from his dad, Tim Ray. That is a big, <laughs> big man. The crown, the Tawaski King crown. You see that amongst just about all the Western Carolina fans here. But because he's been so aggressive over the last three games, he's shooting 70%. Yeah. He's not fading away anymore. His body's going to the rim. He is not having a typical season, the senior this year, but these last two weeks, he's played like his junior and sophomore campaigns where he was very effective, we're told, by Larry Hunter. Again, Wofford is... Back to a three-point advantage, led by as many as seven in the first half. Spacing and movement for the white jersey, Wofford Terriers. Cochran driving and an arm bar from Mike Brown will lead to his first foul of the game. It is in the bonus, so Cochran, who is a 68% free throw shooter, will head to the line. It's interesting with Cochran as Garcia will come back into the game. Cochran started 30 games last season. This year, at one point, it was decided by Mike Young to sit him on the bench and bring him off the bench. And it was an experiment that Cochran was okay with, but he played so well that they had to leave him in the starting lineup. He's been in the starting lineup for the last month and a half, and he's been playing his best basketball of the season as of late. Second chance for Wofford, and it's Collins. Newman out to Garcia. Newman, he gets rejected by Brown. Sinclair leaning in, tough shot, and Cochran finds the board. Bad shot. Shot selection has been an issue for Western in this first half. Exchange for Garcia, lost the handle, he wanted the three. Lost the handle on the ball. Newman cuts, and he's the beneficiary of the Collins assist. Seven points in the first half for C.J. Newman, the sophomore. Wofford's back up five, and a timeout called by Wofford. Reverse, and then take guys off the dribble, take them to the rim. 25, watch Sinclair, there he is. Got shut off by Justin Gordon, thrown away. Cochran the chase down. Cochran all the way inside, and Wofford matches its largest lead again. Cochran into double figures. The shot clock is off. That's why Carl Cochran is starting, because of his defense. He's a great offensive player. He's committed to defense. Last night, late game situation. It was Trey Sumler going one-on-one, -on -one, and he's matched up against one of the great defenders in the SoCon, Carl Cochran. Here comes the double. Mike Young doesn't want Sumler to take the shot. They want another defender. They wanted to give it up. Sumler fires. Off target. Clock at one. And Wofford will take a seven-point halftime lead into the locker room. Carl Cochran averaging 15 a ball game, having a monster SoCon tournament. Second half team. They had a monster second half. They've erased two double-digit deficits in the second half in this tournament to get to the finals. No lead safe. Looking for their first bucket in nearly six minutes of game time. They missed their last seven shots. Western Carolina, only five turnovers in that half, but Wofford turned them into eight points. Wofford, only two turnovers, and the guards haven't turned over yet tonight. Sumler, Cochran starts out the second half on him. Still looking for his first bucket. He gets the offensive rebound. Same five that started the game. Second half. Not 
knocked away from Sinclair. Collins was on the deck to try to save it. Collins threw it away into the hands of Sinclair and a timeout from Larry Hunter on the Western Carolina bench. Early scramble in this second half. A timeout on the floor will step aside. He's back with double digits in both games to get to the SoCon final. They're down by seven. Opening minute of the second half. Two things need to happen. Sinclair needs to get it going offensively. Trey Sumler needs to help. And Western Carolina has to force turnovers against one of the best teams in the country at taking care of the basketball. Wofford only three turnovers in this game. Sinclair with a bucket. He's got six points to go along with five rebounds. Collins. Not and out of the three and Fox is there for the board. Sumler does not have a field goal. Both of his points came at the line in the first half. Just got the last two buckets for Western Carolina, which is back within three. Trying to get Garcia over. New shot clock. Newman rattles a three around and out. Sumler the rebound. Two minutes into the second half. Go back down to King. Play some inside out basketball. He wants it. Well, he really wants it. Shut up, guy. Crowd's going nice. nuts. He tells him to sit down and shut up. I'm going to make a shot. That was a silencer for Cochran, who's got 13 and three threes in this game. Every champion needs a shut up guy. Paul Cochran's that guy for Wofford. Who wants to be that guy for Western Carolina? James Sinclair did a lot of it last night against Davidson. Here's someone. Still nothing. King, offensive rebound of the putback. Western Carolina getting points where they should. Sinclair on the perimeter, King down low. It's a nice one-two punch. There's Cochran flashing. He's got Sinclair on him. He trades a three. In and out. Newman the offensive rebound. And C.J. Newman has nine points off for Wofford tonight. Back up by three. Newman, a 50-50 ball guy, an offensive rebound. You know what you're going to get from him. Effort. Sinclair against the smaller Garcia, and Carl Hess is the one to call the foul. And Eric Garcia, it'll be the first on the freshman for Wofford. Sinclair getting a bucket. It's been a rough year for James Sinclair. You saw his mom, Tara, in the audience. James's father, James Sr., passed away this past summer. Tara is James's mother. James said he's a self-professed mama's boy. Tara has been supporting him all week long here in Asheville, North Carolina. He's a very solid, strong young man. He and Sumler have stayed in Cullowee each of the last three summers to work on their game. From his father, he learned how to take responsibility for his actions and never complain. Pretty good lessons. Nice tip. Boggs has it. Plenty of time here. Wave out the basket. It'll be a foul on Spencer Collins. That takes us to the under-16 timeout. Western Carolina at one point erased the seven-point deficit. Back down by three. For that. Western Carolina ball. Offered up by three. See if Larry Hunter has off the inbounds. It's in there. Still looking for his first field goal. He's 0 of 7 from the floor. Cochran he's is short on everything. Yeah, he's right. lost his legs. Three games in three days. That kid's played a lot of minutes and played very hard. 42 minutes in the overtime win over Davidson last night. They got a switch. Box is on Cochran here. Now Browning blitzes out. Now clock down to 10, right where you'd expect it with Cochran. He and 
initiates the skin. Over Browning. Taking Browning five. It'll be Browning with the board. Here comes Western Carolina. Sinclair has the only three for the Catamounts tonight. Out of nine for three. Well, they completely cleared out for him. Good on ball footwork defensively for Wofford. Number three, John Sweet. Sinclair off of the three. He knew it right away. King the offensive rebound. And here comes Wofford off the board from Spencer Collins. Sinclair trying to dive and knock it away. He's a very good defender. And he's third in the conference in steals. Again, it's Boggs on Cochran, who fires. That was the turn. Cochran came charging in for that rebound. Sumler grabbed it. And Carl has called the foul. That's Cochran a, picks up just a second coach. That's an interesting matchup. Brandon Boggs matched up with Carl Cochran. Yeah, he's bigger. Boggs is 6'5", 190. A little more length. Larry Hunter's talking to him right now, giving him directions on how, how to guard Cochran. Wofford in that sagging man to man. This kid on the block against Aaron Smith. King spins. Skinner. Someone was passing up shots. Yeah. King passed it out. Looked like he wanted Sumler to take that three. Looks like it's Sumler back on Cochran now. A little back door for Skinner. Around and out. Everything but the finish. Great execution by Walker. Let's see if they go the well again. The big guy with 32. Boston King. If you're not shooting well for Summer, you gotta take it off the dribble, get the ball in the back door. Looking for a three-point shooter and take a whiz. Max on the rebound by Boggs. He got the turn defensively. Browning with the putback. It's a scrum underneath. Catamounts are back within one. Seven minutes into the second half. We've got five field goals in the second. They had five in the first half alone. We're using bigger defenders against Cochran here in the second half on their switch off. Tanklewitz this time. Skinner facing up Brown. Tangle wins the help. Cochran, the extra pass. A three from Collins. And a foul is called on Browning. He held the jersey of Lee Skinner, and it's the second foul on Browning, the sophomore. Mike Young said that Lee Skinner is one of the three toughest kids he's ever coached. I'd have to agree with him. Skinner earned that rebound, did everything properly technique-wise, blocking off, being physical and pursuing the ball harder than anybody on the court. He's got a little bit of Noah Dolman in him. He Dolman, does. the 2010 Southern Conference Player of the Year. One of the really solid, tough players in Wofford history. A great low-post footwork. Garcia got a good look but could not hit. Sumler got position for the rebound. Production in the paint. Newman had the defense and the rebound. Again, I like I like what Western Carolina is doing. They're getting the ball right? in the paint. They're just not getting rewarded. Jalen Allen. There he is for three. From Garcia. He's a smart kid. Fifth three for Wofford on 16 attempts. They're back up by four with 11 and a half to play. Brown. Wave out the basket. Carl has called a traveling violation. 
Western Carolina with its seventh turnover of the game, and everybody doing it tonight for Wofford, including the freshman point guard. Jalen Allen wide open, Garcia sees him, done. A couple of freshmen team up for a full point. For Virginia. That's right. That will help them with the committee. They're not out of this thing yet. Played Horizon could get two bits. Yeah, they played Harvard, they played Wisconsin. One of the tough games for Green Bay this year. Wofford by five, 11 to play here in Asheville. Kick call on Mike Brown. Cochran has 13 points tonight. Ninth leading scorer in the Southern Conference. The only preseason all-conference selection for Wofford. He's first team all SoCon. Garcia, the freshman point guard, he was on the all-freshman team. Here's Cochran. And he hits. Yes, he did. He's so good at coming off a screen, squaring his shoulders, and just pogoing into his jump shot. Our one-on-one -on -one matchup was he and Sumler. Sumler still does not have a field goal. Until now. He hunted for that shot. Yeah, he was looking for it. Redshirt senior from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, the former walk-on, turned first team on SoCon. Skinner, who's got six. Great catch right there by Lee Skinner. That was a tough pass, but a great catch. He's brought it against Newman. Knocked away by Cochran into the hands of Sumler. He's so dangerous on the perimeter defensively. From it. Bounce to Browning on the inside. Kept alive, but a foul is called as Allen and Brown were battling for it. They'll get the foul on Jalen Allen in his first. Watch Lee Skinner, number 34. Look at that catch right there. Catches it with his right hand and brings his left in and goes for the finish. You always teach big guys catch everything with two hands, but that was a little bit offline. He reached back, caught it. Great hands. We'll get a breather as will Newman. Justin Gordon's back into the game for Whopper. As is Eris Smith, because Tawaski King is back in. So Smith has the assignment on King, who's about six points tonight. He sets the screen for Sinclair to step back. And Smith grabs the rebound. Wofford searching for its third NCAA tournament trip in the last five years. Cochran fires and hits another three. His fourth of the game. Wofford has its largest lead at nine. Here's King with the left hand. Left and short, and Smith had the defense and the board. What a night. Allen ahead of the field. On the feed from Garcia. First double-digit lead of the game. A sudden we've got an 11 point lead on the layup by Jalen Allen on another assist from the freshman point guard Garcia again we said it Western can score in bunches and they've erased two double digit deficits in the second half in this SoCon tournament can they do it again they need offense from Sumler who has it with six guarded by Allen Sumler Back-to-back -back buckets. He didn't have a bucket for about 30 minutes. He's got two on his last couple of shots. Trey Sumler, he's not settling for jump shots anymore. He's getting to the basket. Sinclair now guards Garcia. No clock run on the floor right now for Walker as he gets a breather. None of them could corral it. It'll be Wofford ball on the other side. Up by nine, seven and a half to play.
Great to see both of these fan bases make their way. Just an hour trip for both of these schools. It's been a fun one tonight, especially for this guy. Cochran's got 18. Garcia for three. And the rebound for Tawaski King, a nine-point game. Western Carolina trying to do something they've done the first two nights of this tournament. That's a race, a second half double digit deficit and win. Boggs on the deck, all the way to the rim. Boy, as he longed to the basket, yeah. just reaches with that foot to gain the advantage. The Catamounts are only down seven. They haven't shot the three well. They haven't shot in general very well. They're still in this game. Set the free throw. 10 for 12. All those that came in the first half. We yep. had a free throw attempt in the second. Here's Cocker. The double from King. Back up by Summer. Skinner out. Yep. Clearing it out for Skinner with five. He sets the defender with just a little bit of a hesitation and just perfect footwork at the low block. Lee Skinner's a nice player down low. Here's Boggs, step around C.J. Newman, and he got the friendly roll. Brandon Boggs has takeover ability. He's got the last couple of buckets for the Catamounts, who are back within seven, with six to play in the Southern Conference Championship. Seven tickets have been punched. Number eight will be punched here. One through one, half for a trap on Western Carolina. Well, Cochran's by himself in the corner. Nobody picked him up. Now, Sumler's trying to keep an eye on him. Boggs has to race over to him. That's one guy you cannot leave over. And the more he moves, the more pressure he puts on the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Looks over the gap. He probes and kicks. Collins left it short. Garcia tapped it in the air and hit the deck. It's grabbed by Boggs. Who steps into a three? Sinclair flies in for the offensive rebound. Second chance for the Catamounts, but Carl Hess will call the foul, not Eric Garcia. It's the second on the freshman. Western Carolina was down by 18 points the first time these two teams met back in January in South Carolina. They cut that deficit down to two, but it was a late Wofford run that won it for them. Feels a little similar to that here tonight. Here's Bond, strong to the rim. He's got the last six for the Catamounts. Boggs getting Western Carolina back within five. He had nine straight points last night to lead the comeback against Davidson. He's doing the same thing again tonight. Skinner got loose on the inside, got the turn by Brown from behind. Who wants it? Western Carolina's got it. Down two scores. No advantage. Sinclair, open three. And the rebound for Cochran on the weak side, and he starts the break for Skinner. Fowler for Cochran now there. Sumler calling for it. Here's Boggs. Off the kick! <laughs> Timeout. Wofford. It's a three-point game as Wofford brings it back up. It's one through one zone. It's been a little bit of a problem for Wofford. They get a look from Collins. That was well short. And a late foul is called on Sumler. It'll be his second. And shots coming for Wofford on the other side of this break. The lead for the Terriers has been as large as 11. Western Carolina has cut it back down to three. 3.52 to go in the SoCon final. How do I shots for Wofford. Spencer Collins is at the line. This feels like last night against Davidson. It does. In the semifinals. Western Carolina has erased two double-digit deficits in the second half to win games. Wofford, however, has not blown a double-digit deficit in its first two games. 
Western Carolina looking for its second ever trip to the tournament, first since 96. Wofford trying to make its third trip in the last five years. Collins buries two, five point game, 350 to play. Boggs has been the takeover guy for Western Carolina the last few minutes. Here he is. Back to King. Trying to corral it and lost it. A turnover. Here's Swinton. He's got Cochran with him, and he says, no, don't pass it to me. Slow it down. Western Carolina did an excellent job spreading back defensively and taking away that initial thrust from Wofford. Cochran trying to get loose. Sagging zone look here. Now Sinclair locking up with Cochran. They're trying to screen a little bit against it. Every time the ball stalls and allows this defense to set it back in. Shot clock down to five. Collins on the deck, all the way to the rim, lost it. Mike Brown, two bys. Way off, and a slap by Brown, but right into the hands of Swinton. Wofford's got it with three to play, and up by five. If you're Mike Young, you're called number two's number. Get Cochran the basketball. Whistle for Carl Hess away from the basketball, and it's a foul. They call James Sinclair for his first. Just the third team foul on Western Carolina, so plenty of fouls to give. Sinclair has five points in the second half, nine for the game. He has helped in this run for Western Carolina to get back in it. Two guys to watch. Skinner down low, number 34, and Cochran coming off the screen, working off the Skinner. Trying to isolate those two guys. They have been really solid one two together in this second half. Here's Cochran off the curl of three. Left it way short. Newman's there. Blocked by Sinclair and Western Carolina Corrales. Big possession. Huge. Here's something against Cochran. A couple of stars squaring off here. You gotta be a little bit patient. Make the defense move. Then you got Sinclair off the dribble. Here's Sinclair, a couple of screens. He finds King. To Boggs. In the lane. Got it to go. Brandon Boggs has 14, and Western Carolina is back within three. Brandon Boggs and his size, he can just see all the defenders. He can pick his shot because of his size advantage over the white jersey Wofford defenders. 95 seconds to go. Cochran off the screen. A three. A clutch. Cold blooded three. His fifth of the game. A six point lead. Sumler. Oh! He answers. One on one. Sumler versus Cochran. Minute to play. Wofford up by three. Here's Cochran again. The blitz to him. Skinner against King. Skinner rolling the ring with the left hand. Wofford timeout. They're back up by five with 44 seconds to go. Trying to get someone right to the rim as soon as he picks it up. Trying to get something early in a one or two seconds. Blitz and a foul on the floor. Again, Wofford had one more foul to give. But that's their last one. It's against Spencer Collins, his third. And that's why I take it to the rim. Not allow that foul to take place. Just take it right to the rack. You get a chance for maybe a two-shot foul. Let's take a blitz. All the way to the rim, rolled out. King was there for the putback. Tawaski King with eight in the second half. A timeout for Western. You can play as aggressively as you okay. need to. All right, Cochran is guarded by Sumler. He covers him up. They get it in. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball here. It's against Western Carolina, so Wofford will reset. They get that foul on Mike Brown. It's his second. So that's just the fourth foul. I'd want the next two fouls on the trap. Okay. And hope that the official swallows his whistle and you get your steal. 
Again, possession arrow belongs to Wofford. That's an important note in this situation with a potential trap coming. They get it into Skinner. There's a foul to give from Brandon Box. So again, one more, I uh, should say, one more foul to give here for Western Carolina. This foul's got to be on the trap. Yeah. Got to go for it in the trap. Wofford is not a great free throw shooting team. Keep that in mind as well. Trap. C.J. Newman. Sinclair trying to cover up Garcia. It's a foul on Sinclair. Garcia with the sixth Western Carolina foul is able to hold on to it. 31.7 to go. has come off. Let's see who they go to. They go to Collins, who's their best free throw shooter. That's the one guy that Whopper has that has been solid this year. Brown fouls him. Collins is 78% at the free throw strike. Nobody else is above 70% for Whopper. So Larry Hunter opted to go foul and save clock okay. versus going after the turnovers because Wofford takes such good care of the basketball. I like that move. I would have said that. I would have gone for the steal. That's just me. Their best free throw shooter missed it, but an offensive rebound for Skinner. As quick and rangy as Western Carolina is in a trapping situation, it just takes one deflection, one more turnover against the team that takes care of it as well as anybody in the country. Skinner is 68% of the season. And he missed it. He can still make it a two-possession game, though. Trey Sumler offensive rebound the last possession and wish they would have pitched it back out for a three. That's the best way to score the three ball is off of an offensive rebound and pitch it right back out. Sumler grabs it. Still a four-point game. Get to the rim. Sumler finds box. That's a three. And it connects. It's a one-point game with 6.3 to play. Larry Hunter calls a timeout. Garcia to inbound. Looking for Cochran. And he gets fouled with 5.3. So about a second came off the clock. Sumler on the foul. And Carl Cochran, who is 68% on the season, and 0 for 1 tonight, will head to the line. The best he can do is make it a three-point game. And if he does, under six seconds, Mike Young said today that he will defend. He, he won't, won't foul. foul. Interesting. But also, remember, Boggs just knocked down a three. But Mike Young doesn't feel like his team is a good enough rebounding team off the free throw. If this is a three-point game, 
Mike Young, I believe, will defend. Cochran. Makes it a two-point game. 22 points for Carl Cochran tonight, the junior out of Marietta, Georgia. to set up the defense with Wofford. He can run the baseline. Here's Sumler. Sumler with three. Sumler fires the tie. Oh, and for the third time in the last five years, the Terriers are headed to the NCAA tournament.